Right, pack it up. I think we are done here, and I think I found it. The worst MMO ever. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on my journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid and sub to the channel for more awful MMOs and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. If you're enjoying the series, consider supporting through the Patreon. Link in the description below. Today, we're playing Bloodlines of Prima. Before we begin, I need you to understand something. This is not an alpha. It's not a beta. It's not even an early access. This is a full released game with microtransactions that you can buy right now. Bloodlines of Prima describes itself as a free-to-play first-person shooter MMORPG with hundreds of elemental abilities to use and powerful equipment to be found. It's on Steam, it's just over two and a half gigs, so let's give it a go. While it was downloading, I did some research. The developer had a YouTube channel where they posted updates, but the last video was four months ago. There's also a subreddit which has ten posts, all from the developer. The Steam updates also feature a Twitch link, but clicking it leads to a dead channel. The intro screen is basic. Should probably check out the settings before we start, crank those graphics up to max as usual, see how it runs. There is currently one server active, and on that server there is one player, and I'm pretty sure that player is either the developer or me. At least the background music is nice, not really matched up with the ambience, but it's a nice standalone bit of music. While loading the game, it tells me I can upgrade stuff by slotting things into the Animus or Materia slots. Assassin's Creed and Final Fantasy. That's where we're going. Straight away. Not a good start, game. Here we go, Bloodlines of Prima. It looks basic. The assets all feel very placeholder, and there's no real depth of design here. By that, I mean... It feels as if design elements have been placed into a blank world randomly, instead of anything actually having any level of specific design or craft behind it. We'll come to see much more of that later. It's first person only, but the mouse movement is very, very sluggish. I'll move the mouse quite a lot and the game will slowly drag itself to follow, like the in-game crosshair is connected to my mouse by treacle. It's lagging behind. But the movement of your character has the opposite problem. It's so sharp that it doesn't stop when you do. Whenever you press W, A, S or D to move and then release the key, your character will keep moving for about a second before actually stopping. Toward the bottom of the screen, you can see I've got four basic abilities. The first two are bound to left and right click. Left click fires a green orb of nature energy and right click is a blue ice beam. Pressing escape opens the main menu, which is an extremely basic text rundown of what all the buttons do. And tab opens the in-game overlay menu, showing us the transmute grid system, inventory equipped items and character skill progression, if you can call it that. The main game shows our health, hunger and thirst meter in the top left. If any of these bars ever drop to zero, we die, so we have three separate things that are essentially health. The actual health bar is refilled with healing magic, and hunger and thirst both need us to find either edible stuff or drinkable water, or magical essences of that specific type. Earth essences refill hunger, and water essences quench thirst. The yellow energy bar at the bottom gets used up whenever we use an ability, but refills slowly on its own. It serves no purpose other than to slow the game down. If you go into a combat encounter with low energy, you won't be able to cast spells, so you'll lose which means you'll just wait for it to refill before charging in. That means each actual event in the game that requires you to use abilities is normally preceded by a five minute period of standing and waiting for this bar to fill up. Talk to an NPC with F, there's no voice acting, they don't even stop to look at you, there's just a text box. If an NPC has a quest for you, they'll have a blue exclamation mark above their head. Once you've accepted the quest, the blue exclamation mark goes slightly lighter blue, and when you've completed the quest, it goes back to being exactly the same blue as before. Meaning when you see an exclamation mark, it might mean I have a quest, or you've just done a quest. You have to remember which it is. Quests reward you with items. For example, this quest will give me N Miten, which sounds French. 
Pressing L opens your quest log, showing you your active quests, but that's pretty much all it does. It won't list who gave you the quest, where you hand it in, or what level it's recommended for, nor will it add any indication to your world map of where you have to actually go, and we will get to the map later. My first quest needs me to gather 20 water essence. I'm simply given the advice that they're somewhere south, so I set off south and then combat happens. It was right up until this point that I still had some hope for the game. Yes, it's basic and yes, it's rudimentary, but maybe the combat system will save it. Maybe Bloodlines of Prima will bring us a combat system so unique, so intuitive, so out there from the rest of the genre that we'll have to take a step back and say this this is the way combat should be done from now on. There is also a chance that it won't do that. There seem to be about four different models of enemies and then they all get pallet swapped infinite number of times and the way they move is just odd. While both you and NPCs can move smoothly, enemies seem to stagger quickly, then stand still, then stagger again. And every enemy does this. There are two problems with this. One, it's just awful to watch. This animation, why? Why Why not just have the thing moving smoothly? Who thought this was a good idea? It's jarring and awkward. And two, it means I can't aim my shots properly, which is a pretty big deal seeing as I only have ranged attacks. If I fire at where an enemy is, they've often staggered away before my spell has had chance to travel to them. And I can't fire at where they might be because the enemy movement seems random. Some of them run toward me, some run away, some jump side to side. It's kind of difficult to lead my shots when I've got no clue where the enemy is going to be. After the first awful combat encounter, I open the world map. If this were an early access game, I'd be more forgiving. But you can pay real money on Steam to buy premium currency, more on that later. And because of that, I'm going to critique it like a full professional game. If you expect my money, I expect your quality. And honestly, this map looks like someone drew it on paint. It's hard to spot where you actually are. You are this small profile icon. There's no minimap in the game, so you'll be opening the world map whenever you need to go anywhere. I'm still trying to find these 20 water essence things and I've been running around for a while now. I say running, I've been moving south because there's no run or walk settings, you just move at this speed constantly. I try my luck with the world chat, I did not see or hear a single other person this entire session. Why is this huge gate textured like that? Did the textures just not load or is it meant to actually look like that? Are those stripes placeholders? Then I realise, no. It's just mystical blue bricks and black obsidian with no connection to each other. These textures are really odd. Why would you do this? This is just a single simple texture repeated and tiled again and again. I did the same thing when I was making inns and hotels in RPG Maker. I'm used to seeing this on NES and SNES games, not PC games. Open the menu to try and change the key bindings, and you can't. You can't customise anything to do with gameplay. I bump into a much harder enemy and I defeat it using the advanced tactic of walking backwards while shooting. I will end up doing this a lot. Figure I might as well head back to town, accept some more quests, and see if there's anything else I can do. I'd like to stress one more time, if this was someone's first attempt at making a game and this was your practice run, fine, good, good on you and well done. As a person who creates things, I know how difficult it is to create, and I feel kind of mean being so mean to this game. If it's a passion project or a learning experience, that's absolutely fine. But remember, the first thing you see on Steam is the ability to spend 15 quid on microtransactions and premium currency for this game. If it expects me to spend real money, I expect it to be a real game. I get back to the starting town, accept all the quests, and then wonder why the banker is dressed as a ninja. Then I wonder why the doctor is dressed as a ninja. Then I realise they could probably only afford a few character models and had to reuse the ninja quite a lot. Spelling mistake in Doc Brooks's quest dialogue, missing the letter U from the word until. I press every button on the keyboard to see if it does something, and P opens the PvP menu, which is interesting because that wasn't listed on the control menu when I press escape. I'm wondering what the large glowing portal in the middle of the village does, so I walk into it and... 
It's a teleporter. You see, all the local villagers are connected to the main citadel, which is a safe place built high up on a floating disc, which is actually quite a cool idea. You can teleport from the citadel to any of the smaller villages. Try to talk to some of the NPCs, but they've all got placeholder dialogue. Apart from this guy who tells me the whole history of the world. Something about Prima and bloodlines. The NPCs have health stats, so can you attack them? No. There's very little here. There's no main story quest, there's no plot, there's no shops, there's no anything really. So back to the frozen village we go. There's a guard tower with a ladder. Can you climb it? Of course you can't. I'm being sent off to cleanse the ruins, but I can't run, so traveling anywhere takes an absolute age. One of the only good things I've seen so far. If two opposing projectiles hit each other in midair, they'll cancel each other out, which is actually quite a nice touch. Opening the overlay menu, I mess around with the fuse system, which allows you to combine materia, I know, and combination items to make other stuff. The game says you can make thousands of things and you just need to experiment. There's no table or book or Wikipedia page on how this works, so you just throw in random stuff and hope for the best. I managed to combine an item A and an item B to make another item B, but still end up using both items, leaving me one item A down. I think I'll leave this system alone for now. I find some fun guy, pick it up and store it in my inventory. It's an RPG, might come in handy later. Now this is an interesting structure, looks very mid-90s video game, looks very out of place, which means it's exactly the kind of place I want to explore. The architecture and geography of this game has absolutely no consistency. It's as if someone has bought several cool looking but not connected assets from a developer shop, placed them all together and just called it a finished game. Get into a fight I'm not quite ready for and get killed by a water warden. The reason I get killed is they have an attack that summons a damaging bubble of water right where I'm standing, meaning I can't dodge it or counter it in any way. So death. You'll lose every single item in your inventory, a large chunk of experience and respawn a short distance away from where you died, meaning if you died somewhere dangerous you can get caught in a death loop. Trying to navigate, but it's proving difficult because the white of the compass letters at the top of the screen is blending perfectly with the white of the sky in the background, so I can't pick out which direction I'm facing, meaning I've got to glance at the grass just to see the compass. Find a pineapple. Well, I dropped everything else when I died, so I guess you're all I've got now. Come on, pineapple, let's go on an adventure. Back on the overlay menu, these icons on the right are your level up rewards. Every time you level up, you can spend one point on one of these things, such as improving your spell damage, recharging speed, or health. The improvements are absolutely minute, but what I'm concerned about is these icons. I know these icons, but I can't remember from where. They're definitely from another game. If you recognize which game they're from, then please let me know in the comments below. I did a little bit of digging and I don't think anything in this game has actually been designed by the designer. I think every single asset and every single system has been purchased and then just slotted together. Which means these icons, I'm pretty sure are stolen from somewhere. If you recognize them, please let me know in the comments below. Back to combat. It is so, so bad. There's no tactics beyond walk backwards and shoot, enemies continue to move sporadically, and the animations and sound are just so placeholder. The only entertaining thing about combat is how whenever these specific models die, their loincloths glitch straight up. This guy is standing to full attention and should be proud. I wonder if this happens every time I kill this exact model, so I kill another and... Yep, every single time. I die again and lose more experience, which means if you aggro too many enemies, which is easy because they all seem to have a linked aggro range, you'll get swamped and you won't progress at all. Not that there actually is anywhere to progress to. I am one hour into this game by now and I hate this. It's pointless, I have no motivation, it feels awful, it feels unfinished. This feels like a first year college student's first attempt at ever making a game. They had six months to make something and they crammed this in six hours. And not even they know what they made. 
Back to the overlay menu. Your character's stats. Each stat, strength, vitality, agility, and the others, is a different element. Leveling strength improves earth. Leveling agility improves air. So just call them that. These names, these stats, earth, fire, air. Why are you calling them strength, agility, mind, willfulness? Just call them the element that they level up. I finally finish the first quest, killing 20 of those stupid air enemy things. I go to turn it in, the reward is awful, and the next quest the guy gives me is... exactly the same quest. There is zero quest progression. There is no plot, there is no story, there is no character journey, and every single quest will just give you the same quest. Again, repeatedly, forever. Let's go check out if a new area is any better, so back through the portal. I have to say I'm really not keen on that portal effect. It warps the screen in a helix style. It's kind of nauseating. It's really hard to critique this game. Normally I'd be able to say something like this. That portal transition effect doesn't quite fit this game's aesthetic, but this game doesn't have an aesthetic. The trees are semi-realistic, but the mountains are all untextured and unnaturally placed. The NPCs walk like humans, but the enemies stutter like robots. What is this game trying to be? While walking around the outside of the Citadel, I'm wondering why am I casting such a damn large shadow? And after running around for a while, I can answer that. This game only renders shadows that are this close to you. So if you're standing in the shadow of a building, you'll only see a localised area shadow around you, and the rest of the ground looks untextured and fine. But as you move, you just enter the render range of the shadow. So you'd think the shadow effects mean a really bad day and night cycle, but oddly, no. There's an actual in-game day and night cycle, and you can watch the sun and the moon move across the sky. Check out this sunset. It actually looks okay. This building has a fully rendered interior. Why? There's nothing to do in it. I can't imagine the designer actually built this themselves, so again, it pushes toward my theory, they just bought a load of game assets and slapped them haphazardly together. Graphical glitch with this NPC, the skybox behind them seems to take priority over their actual model so they have no head from certain angles. I'm standing on the edge of the floating disc citadel. The view isn't bad, but it's so damn dark I can hardly appreciate it, so let's wait till morning and then jump off and see if there's fall damage. 15 minutes. I just stood there waiting and doing nothing for 15 minutes. Just so you don't have to. Morning arrives and the view isn't bad in a strangely surreal sort of way. Is there fall damage? No. After jumping from the citadel, I fight and lose to a nature warden. I respawn a few meters away and realize I've made a massive mistake. I'm alone in higher level wilderness, massively underleveled for the enemies around me with no way to get back. Now if you open the world map, there is a teleport button which will take you directly to the citadel, but it costs 10 premium currency called Lumina. 100 Lumina costs just under one pound, which doesn't sound like much, but it's a perfect example of create the problem, sell the solution style microtransactions, which I've talked about before. By now I've worked out the basic left click attack, the green orb, also applies a very short healing effect to me, so if I'm injured the best thing to do is constantly spam the green nature spell. What do I do? What do I do in this game? There is no main storyline, there is no plot. Every single side quest just gets completed and then repeated. The combat isn't engaging at all. The exploration has zero graphical or geological consistency to anything. Why would anyone play this? I'm playing because it's literally my job. This is dire. This game is free and even that is overpriced. I get killed again. Oh, also, whenever you respawn, there's a second or two of silence, then this really obnoxious, badly edited wind noise that's cut off at the start and the end. Have a listen. Happens every time. Maybe I'll just pick a direction and go that way. You know what? North. Let's just go north. I find a cliff face and see a cool-looking ziggurat in the distance, surrounded by lava. I wonder if the lava kills you. It does, but in a strange way. It's only as thick as water and only has a surface texture, no actual in-game solid hitbox, meaning you fall straight through it and then while you're technically in it, you take damage and die. There's no visual effect of being in it. You just take damage and then die. 
More exploring for the sake of exploring because there really is nothing else to do, and then much more death. This music is way too good for this game, so I'm thinking they've just stolen it, and I'm waiting for a copyright strike any day now from whoever actually owns it. I'm not saying the music is good in the context. See, the music itself may be a nice piece, but it doesn't fit the theme or ambience of the levels at all. Every single part of this game is just ambient strings or chilled out relaxed classical style music. The music is completely disassociated and disconnected from the environment or situation it's meant to be scoring. Maybe if I run all the way back under the floating disc, there'll be some kind of teleporter to get me back up there. No, no there isn't. The world map says the closest village to me is the Ion outpost just north of me, so I guess I'll run there. I spot the tower in the distance, which looks similar to the frozen village tower, making me think we're going in the right direction. I arrive, and not only is the tower similar, but the village is the same. Literally, it's the exact same village. Copy-pasted, with the same buildings, the same NPCs, standing in the same spots, handing out the same quests, and even the quest dialogue is exactly the same. All they did was change one word in every single individual quest. So instead of killing ice monsters, you're killing fire monsters. But apart from that, it is literally exactly the same. So of course, I accept all of them and set off to do them. The map is big, but it's empty. Game designers seem to think having a huge amount of negative space, that's a lot of nothing, is fun. And it's not. While it may be visually impressive, because scale and size is always awe-inspiring, if there's no way to traverse the empty space, or nothing to do within it, or a reason for it to exist, then being within it is not a fun experience. I can see and admire how large an aircraft hangar is. Those things are massive, and the scale may impress me, but walking through it repeatedly is not in itself a fun activity. The empty space should be set dressing for other fun stuff, not simply a place to exist. You can't impress gamers by saying, hey, look how much nothing we can put in our game. Where are the enemies I need to kill? Actually, you know what, bigger question, where is the plot? I spoke to a guy in the Citadel who explains the history to me, so this game has lore. I think that also makes me one of the only people in existence to have read this game's lore. Why doesn't it have a story? If you're making a game, and you get to a release date, and you realise you forgot to add the story, consider not releasing your game. I fight this Electric Warden, I kill it, then a spell he cast before he died activates and he kills me, meaning another setback and more experience lost. This Nemesis Scout may sound cool, but when you realise every enemy has exactly the same AI, combat gets very old very fast. This world is alien and not in a good way, not in like a Morrowind way where it feels real but strange, possible but abnormal. This feels impossible. It feels like a video game. Oddly shaped buildings placed in seemingly random positions, giant monuments to nothing, massive empty spaces for no reason, identical villages, staggering enemies. It feels wrong. I feel like I'm playing a game that got rendered badly or code that got messed up before being exported. I feel like someone's chopped up a book, rearranged it, and handed it to me. It makes just enough sense to read through it, but it's just messed up enough to completely confuse me. You know what this game reminds me of? Have you ever seen those pictures of someone's face, but it's upside down and it looks completely normal at first glance, but when you actually turn it the right way up, you realise the mouth has been inverted and it's really horrible and disgusting and wrong and abnormal? That's this game. This is a giant monument with health. I attack it and nothing happens. It loses health, but then it restores its health automatically and damages me, but it has no animation for either of those things, so I don't know that it's happening. Then, it seems to summon a load of enemies to defend it, so I need to run away. Also, the map of this zone is called Lifeless Area, which is ironically the most accurate description of this game so far. This giant metal bridge is again an impressive scale and an awful storytelling device. I don't know who built it or why. 
I don't know how old it is or how new it is. I don't know what relation it has to anything, and there's no visual or audio clues telling me. Which is annoying, because this is a video game and that's literally all they're made up of. Making something larger doesn't make it inherently better, that's what she said. If anything, it just shows that you can't craft a tightly focused gameplay experience, and you're relying on impressive scale to cover the gaping holes in your absolutely abhorrent gameplay experience. This bridge leads to small lava islands. I get almost excited to explore the giant ziggurat at the end of the islands, and then I get killed again. At this point, I'm feeling the game would actually be better without the enemies and remade as a drug-induced walking simulator, and I freaking hate walking simulators. I've been playing for about two hours now, and this isn't just one of the worst MMOs, this is one of the worst games ever. Every time you enter a new map zone, the name of the zone pops up, but again, I know this font from somewhere. I just can't place it. Also, the word negative here is spelt wrong. I walked all the way back to town, I returned to the Citadel, and then journeyed to the Earth Kingdom to see if that zone is any better, but I'm not getting my hopes up. The zone is the same. Of course it's the same. It's the same village, the same guard tower, the same NPCs, the same quest, the same quest dialogue with a single word changed. One of these quest rewards is a ring that increases aggro by 400%, which would be useful if this game had tanking classes or other players. The map, quest descriptions and quest log feature no recommended or required level guides, no general area recommendations to complete the quest in, no nothing. It's up to you as a player to journey around until you can randomly find the enemies that are roughly your level. Thankfully, that seems to be here. Kill 20 Earth Elementals. At least you don't lose your kills on death, which means the Kill X quests are infinitely easier and safer than the Collect X quests. Because if you die before you hand those quests in, you have to get all the items again. My energy again runs low, meaning no more spells for a while, so I get to enjoy the thrilling gameplay mechanics of sitting there waiting for it to recharge. I finish the quest, kill 20 of the correct enemy, but I can't seem to hand it in. I speak to every single NPC in the small village, and none of them want it. I check the quest log, and of course that's no help as it shows nothing relative to the quest giver or receiver, so after walking around the whole place and speaking to everyone three times, I just give up. Let's go back to the Citadel one final time. I'm hoping for some semblance of story, some semblance of plot, some thread to grab onto, some plot hook from somewhere, but nope, none of the NPCs say everything. They all say exactly the same copy-pasted line. They couldn't even write different dialogue for the NPCs, they all say the same thing. My thirst gets low, then it gets empty, and I die. That just means these three bars here are effectively three different health bars that are refilled by three different styles of items. Why? Have one health bar. Have one hunger bar. When the hunger bar gets low, have it negatively affect your abilities. Have it slowly drain your health. Have it make so everything recharges a bit slower. If you're going to make me instantly die whenever any of these bars hit zero, if the outcome is exactly the same for all three of them, don't have three of them. Just have one of them. Have constantly draining health, because that's all this is. I have written extensively and academically about bad game design. I have critiqued, I have compared and contrasted many gaming decisions from what I would consider to be bad games, but I never, ever thought anything like this could possibly exist. I'm actually thankful, because this game has shown me there is a wealth of material that I still need to cover extensively. The Citadel itself is an eclectic mix of game design ideas and mismatched proportions, the tall Venetian-style buildings, the gear graveyard, this giant ice or lava crystal thing. Nothing matches, and there's no cohesion. I run up these steps into the doorway. The steps clip into my character model, so you can't. You have to jump to get through them. It's a small issue, but you know what? It doesn't even bother me by now. This is the least crazy thing I've seen. This game is a drug-induced fever dream. It's an essay you've had six months to write being crammed in six hours before it's due. It's a pizza you made while drunk and threw everything you had in the fridge onto. You expected it to be good, but it turned out to be terrible. 
It's the adventure story you wrote in school when you were nine years old and never bothered actually researching how to write stories. It's the fantasy world you developed in your head as a teenager but with none of the actual charm. It's a melting pot of ideas. It's a melting pot of non-ideas. It's a melting pot of insanity. Everything is mashed together and then devoid of any personality. Remember that Simpsons episode where Homer designed a car for the average man called The Homer that was just a massive conglomeration of the worst possible design choices? That's this game. The combat system is dire. The enemies are repetitive. The quest system is pointless. There's no story. There's no explanation. There's no motivation. This very close to being no game. This game feels like a tutorial project. A new designer sat down to make something and decided to just throw everything together to get used to the development software. This is a testing ground. Maybe they did some terraforming, learned how to copy paste, did some palette swapping, wrote some quest dialogue, learned how to use the find and replace text tool within dialogue. This is a lesson. It's an attempt to learn. And that is fine. If this is the first draft of a first draft for someone who never made a game, well done. It feels like it was made late one night in a burst of passionate design. This is a test. What this is not in any way is finished. Hell, it's barely even started. And yet, it sits on Steam, advertised as an FPS MMORPG and has premium currency available for purchase. This worst MMO series will continue, but honestly, it's going to take one hell of a bad game to be worse than this. As is usual in these reviews, I climb to the tallest point, which in this case is inside this building. I find a cosy little bedroom and I settle down to die. My bloodline of Prima ends here. To finish this review, I award Bloodlines of Prima, Lifeless Area, out of 10. Cheers for watching. If you've enjoyed, then consider showing your support on the Patreon. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. And a massive thank you to all my Patreon subs and Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And as always, have a great day.